So one time I had a student, Oh Hashem, went from katse le katse. One day he wanted to commit murder, mamash murder, not joking, not exaggeration. Mamash wanted to commit murder. I had to convince him otherwise, without him knowing that I'm convincing him. So you have to be a little bit of armumi. You have to be sneaky a little bit. You can't. Sometimes you got to tell somebody to their face, hey, listen, Mechal Shabbat, Mont Yumat, Shalashah, da, da, da. You have to tell people to their face sometimes. But most of the time, you got to convince them that it's their idea. Like it says, Aaron Rodef Shalom. Aaron chased peace. How did he chase peace? Two people argued. Two people argued, but then he goes to one of them and goes, ah, oh, you wouldn't believe it. What? Reuven, I just saw him, he's crying about the fight that you had with the things that he said. He said he's so sorry, but he's so embarrassed to say I'm sorry to you. He goes, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't believe it. Then he goes to Shimon. Shimon, you wouldn't believe I just came back from, uh, from him. He's crying about what he said to you during the argument. You wouldn't believe it. Really? But these two guys, they're friends. They got into a fight, their heart melts. They go, they hug each other. Oh, hey, listen, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. By the time they find out, that none of this actually happened, they're already back to being friends. Who cares? Well, Dev Shalom, he's creative. Sometimes for the truth, for, for, for peace, you're allowed to lie, but only if you, if you know exactly what you're doing. Aaron, Aaron. You're not, we're not Aaron. You have to know exactly how to use it. You have to have precise directions, not just lie whenever you feel like it because it sounds good. But nonetheless, sometimes you have to convince people that it's their idea. So a guy wants to commit murder, I have to convince him otherwise, and convince him that it's his idea. Baruch Hashem, he does tshuva, starts keeping Shabbat, starts keeping mitzvot, little by little, gets stronger and stronger. One day he tells me, okay, I decided I'm going to leave work, I'm going to go to Kolel. I'm thinking to myself, okay, you're only about a year into your tshuva. You don't have, okay, so you're keeping Shabbat, you're not murdering. Good, Chazak great. But to have high-level emunah to go be out of Rech that makes $1,000 a month, it's not easy. You're married, you got two kids, three kids. If you were single, 18, 19, 20, 22 years old, 25 years old, 30 years old, in today's age, everybody's 30 is single. But point is, you're single, you don't have anything, you still live with your mom, fine, go to Kolel. But if you have wife, kids and everything, and they're waiting for food every day, and your wife is not bringing in any, any panasa, or not enough, you, you can't, you can't. You can't tell the guy, no, no, that's the best thing for you to do. Unless the guy is like ultra, ultra strong, and the wife is even stronger, and the kids are stronger, there's little Mashiachs running around the house, yeah, maybe. But it's not a rule of thumb to just send people to Kolel. Because you have to have also emunah to go to Kolel. In essence, you're starting every month in negative. In America, you get paid approximately $1,000 a month in Kolel. In Israel, you get paid about 500 So imagine, you have a family, five, six kids. Just the rent is $2,000. $1,800. $1,500. So already, in the beginning of the month, you're already in a negative $500 to $1,000. Doesn't include food. Doesn't include electricity. Doesn't include clothing for the kids. Doesn't include anything. Doesn't include even basic needs like toothbrush. Who's nothing? Just the rent. So obviously you have to have emunah of where this money's gonna come from, of how. You know, you have to it's, it's not hard, it's not easy. Plus, you cannot be a person that likes money. If you like money too much, you're never gonna survive. Someone that likes money will not survive without money. As a matter of fact, someone that likes money will struggle because of his money for the rest of his life, even if he has a lot of money. Because someone that likes money will never feel like he has enough of it. Because if you think money is good, then you want more. You never have enough. You're going to fall off. And at one time when, I, when one of my Talmudim told me that he wants to go to a kolel, I advised him against it. Now, Someone who doesn't know it would think that I'm a kofel. Think that I'm a heretic, tell him somebody not to go to the kolel. Go learn Torah. But I knew he can't handle it. Why he just started doing tshuva, he just was convinced not to commit murder just a little while before that. To go to kolel is a little bit of a push. 
I'm not joking. I'm not exaggerating. I'm telling you this is a serious story, story, true story. I know it's funny, and it's, I'm saying it in a funny way, but it's mamas. This is the type of stuff you deal with. And uh, I told him no. I told him he shouldn't go. And he did, and he went anyway. Had a lot of serious problems. Why? Because eventually the savings that he had ran out. Okay, now what? All of a sudden, the wife's no good anymore. Why? What'd she do? She was good this whole time. Why is she not good anymore? The kids are no good anymore. Why? The kids were perfect until now. What happened? All of a sudden, this whole world went and collapsed. Why? Because he thought that, you know, he's going to go to Kolo for six months. He's going to become Rabbi Akiva. Takes a long time to become Rabbi Akiva. Takes a lot of emuna, a lot of nisyonot, a lot of tests. You have to earn your way. You can't just become Rabbi Akiva. Even Rabbi Akiva had to learn how to be Rabbi Akiva. First of all, by making himself into nothing. How? He went to kindergarten, learned Aleph Bet, which not only taught him Aleph Bet, but taught him how to eliminate his ego for the sake of Hashem. For Kvod Hashem. You want to learn Torah? Eliminate your ego. If you're learning Torah to be some big special guy, you're learning nothing. That Torah that's full of gava, that's full of uh, all types of arrogance, it's not from Shamayim, it's not from heaven. That's what Hashem says. Torah that's full of arrogance, it's not for me, it's not my same Torah. It's something else. So, you have to understand that some people have a yes, some people have a no, some people have a check mark, some people have an X mark next to them. You have to graduate and get to different levels at a certain time. This is why it's very, very important to consult with someone that's gone through it, that knows it, that's a, your rabbi. Have a rabbi that knows who you are. Just asking any general rabbi, hey rabbi, should I go to yeshiva? Every rabbi will tell, yeah, sure, go to yeshiva. Go to Kolo, go to seminary, go to Israel, go do Aliyah, go do this, go, of course, yes to everything, why not? But if they knew that that yes meant that it's going to be a divorce, it's going to be this, it's going to be that, it's going to be all these problems with it, who's going to tell you yes? So when you have a Rav that's good, that knows the real details, assuming you're telling them the truth, because that's also another problem we deal with on a regular basis, everyone pretends. They give, they come to the rabbi with a pretend story. Oh yeah, you know, I, I have this problem with my wife, I have this problem with my husband, ta, ta, ta. But why? why? Why do you have a problem with this wife or husband? Oh, I don't know, I don't know, they just pick on me. Oh, they just pick on you, just this innocent miskena, this innocent victim, you don't do anything? Yeah, I don't know, it's been like that for five years already. Always picks on me, always this, always that. And all, you know, they tell you a story like, wow, this like husband is like Freddy Krueger. It's like, what kind of, you know, Rasha is this woman married to? What kind of wicked witch is this guy married to? Me, scan. Now, when you find out the other side of the story, you ask the husband or the wife, he tells you the other part. He goes, oh, yeah, by the way, she cheated on me last month. Oh, yeah, by the way, he cheated on me last month. He said, whoa, whoa, whoa. If I was him, I would have killed you. Well, this him yelling at you is actually giving you a... <laughs> He's giving you the benefit of the doubt. You're worse than he is. You're worse than even describing him. You don't tell you that. No, everybody's a tzaddik. Everybody that comes to the rabbi, no, I'm a tzaddik, I do this. You know how much tzaddik I give? You know how much this? You know how much that? You know how much... No, I pray at 6 o'clock in the morning every day. You don't need to pray at 6 o'clock in the morning. You need to be a human being first. You can pray at 8. But be a human being. So... If you're telling this Rav the truth, tell him the full story, your full thought, and not giving him like a uh, where's Waldo puzzle. You know, you give him like, you know, one word, like a code, and he has to figure out what you're saying. It's like, I'm going. Where? Eight hours later, I went. Where'd you go? Two. By the end of the week, you found out he went to Knesset on Monday. Like, it's codes. It's like different, like, you know, they don't tell you the whole story. Just tell them. Why are you making me ask you questions? Tell me the whole story from A to Z. I'll help you. But if you tell me little codes like I'm some detective, most of the time, eventually, me, personally, eventually I just give up. I don't even ask you. Okay, you want Good luck. Oh, you don't care where I went? No, I don't care. If you care to tell me, tell me. I don't have time. I have thousands of people. 
Baruch Hashem, Team Hashem is reaching over 100,000 people a week. 100,000 people a week, 150,000 people a week. Think I have time to figure out what your story is? Tell me, I'll help you. You don't want to tell me? Good luck. But this is very, very important for people to understand. You want help from somebody, you have to be honest. You have to be honest. You have to be honest with yourself and know where you stand. If you really want to be a Tamit Chacham, and you're willing to chase the Torah like you other people, yourself included in the past, chased money, go for it 100%. As long as your life is able to handle it. But don't say, don't come to me and tell me, no, 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 my wife is Yetzirah. What do you mean she's Yetzirah? She wants to eat. No, my wife is Yetzirah. She's not letting me go to Kol. Yeah, no, she's not that she's Yetzirah. She wants you to learn. But she also wants to eat. And if you don't go to work, she and the three kids you have at home are not going to eat. That's not Yetzirah. That's survival. So you, first, start learning in the morning. Start learning in the afternoon during the break. Start learning at night. Become disciplined. Little by little, you'll be learning a few hours a day. Little by little, you'll gain more knowledge. Little by little, you'll gain merit. Little by little, you'll gain siyat dishmaya, help from Hashem. That will give you the ability to learn even more. Why? Because you're chasing Torah like you're chasing money. But if the only way you're going to learn is if you go to Kola all full time and put your family at risk, then what are we doing here? This will lead